And then we have William Wallace, who has emerged on turn 11, which is the earliest we can get him in the campaign. Hello everyone, it's Hoplite Mike, I hope you're all doing well. Today we are back with Medieval 2 Total War, specifically the Britannia campaign. We're going to be looking at William Wallace, who is the hero character for Scotland. We're going to be going through all the different triggers which cause him to spawn, and what's the earliest we can get him to appear on the campaign map. So there are three different triggers that cause William Wallace to spawn. The first trigger is if it is turn 10 or later and Scotland drops below five settlements, William Wallace will spawn on the turn after Scotland drops below five settlements. So in this scenario, I'm playing as Scotland. I've just gifted Norway three of my regions. So I now have four regions controlled, which is below the five threshold to trigger the spawn. So what I'm going to do is pass turn and show that he spawns on turn 11. The game doesn't actually monitor the event until turn 10, so it's not possible for him to spawn on turn 10. The earliest you can get him is turn 11. The fires of independence and there he is. William Wallace emerges on turn 11 because we've fallen below 5 seconds. The next trigger relates to Scotland being attacked by England. The game files state that if it is turn 15 or later, and England captures a Scottish settlement, William Wallace will spawn on the turn after the settlement is taken. Now I have run a few tests and what I have found is that the settlement actually needs to be taken on turn 16 or later for William Wallace to spawn the turn after. So either England needs to lay siege to the settlement on turn 15 and take it on turn 16, or the English army needs to have siege equipment and be able to take the settlement on turn 16 straight away. And to show this, I'm going to run a few demonstrations. So here we are on turn 15, playing as England. I have an army right outside of Edinburgh with three catapults, or three units of siege equipment. So what we're going to see here is if we attack Edinburgh and we take the settlement, William Wallace won't spawn on turn 16. But when we rerun it and take the settlement on turn 16, he will spawn on turn 17. So let's do this one first. We're going to attack Edinburgh. It's turn 15. We've got the siege equipment so we can assault straight away. We're going to automatically resolve the battle. Claim the victory and sack the settlement. So we'll pass turn here and we'll see that William Wallace does not spawn. The enemy lays siege to our people, sire. The enemy has surrounded us. We are besieged. Okay, so now it's the next turn. Edward goes on crusade, but William Wallace does not spawn. Okay, so now we're going to rerun this scenario. I've reloaded the save file and passed the turn 16. We're in exactly the same place as we were before with King Henry outside of Edinburgh with our catapults, but it is one turn later being turn 16. What we're going to see here is if we take Edinburgh on turn 16, William Wallace will spawn on turn 17. We're going to take the army, assault Edinburgh, And hopefully, Wallace will spawn next turn. The fires of independence burn and there we have it, William Wallace emerges on turn 17, which I think is the earliest he can trigger, he can emerge through this specific trigger. His name is William Wallace. Lastly, I just want to show that this will still work if you don't have siege equipment in your army. So I'm going to remove the catapults. It's turn 15. And we're going to lay siege to Edinburgh and attack it on the turn after, being turn 16. We shall... The enemy has surrounded us. We are besieged. My lord, we are besieged. Okay, so we laid siege on turn 15. It's now turn 
16 I'm going to capture the settlement. And now uh, William Wallace should spawn on turn 17. The fires of independence burn brightly in Scotland. There we have it. So, we did still spawn its neighbors on turn seventeen to unite Scotland's clans. His name is Willie. Just as a note on the second trigger being the England Attack Scotland trigger, the key point is that England takes the settlement on turn 16 or later. They can lay siege on whatever turn they want, they could do that on turn 11 for example, but they have to take the settlement on turn 16 or later for William Wallace to spawn on the next turn. If England take a settlement before turn 16, that won't cause William Wallace to spawn unless they capture another settlement on turn 16 or later. So if neither of the first two triggers have occurred, there is a third trigger, which is just based on the number of turns that have passed. So when looking at the game files, it does run through how this works, but in practice what it means is that Wallace will basically spawn randomly between turns 18 and 30. The way it works is that when you start a campaign in Scotland, a Wallace spawn timer value will be randomly selected between 0 and 12 and then for each turn that passes you get a plus 1 then when that value reaches 30 Wallace will spawn so the earliest you can get Wallace is if your random value is 12 and then you get plus 1 every turn and you reach 30 on turn 18 the latest you'll get him is if your random value is 0 and then you get plus 1 each turn and you reach 30 on turn 30 so in this specific campaign, Wallace was spawned on turn 21, which means I think my random value would have been quite high, would have been 9. So, yeah, I mean, that's just a kind of random value. There's not much you can do about that. There is quite a big difference between him spawning on turn 18 and turn 30 because you'd expect to be significantly more progressed by turn 30 so it wouldn't have as much of an impact but there's nothing you can really do about that unless you want to mod the game files. So if we want William Wallace as early as possible we'll need to use the first trigger which is the Scotland is weakened trigger which means falling below five settlements on turn 10 or later. So now we need to prepare in terms of what we want to do. So there's no point in capturing other settlements because we'll just need to give them up and there's no point in investing money in settlements that we're not going to be keeping being the ones that we're going to hand over on turn 9 or 10. So we start with 7 settlements and we're going to need to drop to 4. The settlements I would recommend keeping are Perth, Edinburgh and Glasgow because in terms of income generation and population these are the best cities that you have. Dumfries and Aberdeen don't generate as much money and they don't have as big a uh, population so I would give up Dumfries and Aberdeen. In terms of Stirling and Inverness these are the only castles that you have but Stirling is a wooden castle whereas Inverness is a fill castle and has more population. So I would recommend giving up Stirling and keeping Inverness. So what it's going to happen is we're going to keep Glasgow, Edinburgh and Perth and Inverness and give up Aberdeen, Stirling and Dumfries but we're not going to give them up straight away because we can still earn some money from them. So what we want to do is only invest money in the towns that we are keeping. I would recommend trying to get the population growth going because population is sort of how you earn money or the best way to earn money in this game. So we'll get the land clearance in each of these 
settlements and we're not going to invest any money in Aberdeen, Stirling or Dumfries. So basically that's all we're going to do is just keep investing money until we get to turn 9 so I'm going to sort of cut to that point. Okay, so I'm now at turn 9. As I was saying before, I've only invested money in Glasgow, Edinburgh, Perth and Inverness. Stirling, Aberdeen and Dumfries remain the same as when we started the game. So, we need to pass one more turn. But before we do that, we know that we are going to be giving up Dumfries, Stirling and Aberdeen. Scene. So what we want to do is bring our soldiers into position here. Set a watch. We camp here to watch. Do have a large army at Stirling, so I'm going to take Aye. some of these units. An enemy to crush. It's worth taking the siege equipment as well. We make camp here, lads. Where's the fight? Come on, Aye. what? Although that will slow you down. Set watches. We command me. Aye, Lord. Aye, my liege. My king. So what we're doing here is we're trying to get troops into position to take back the settlements that we're about to give up. So I'm going to pass one more turn. And now what we're going to do is because it's turn 10, we're now going to give up our settlements to Norway. An enemy to crush. So take out the armies from the settlements you're going to give up. Joining our forces. Where to? I lord. So that they are stationed outside. My king. I onward. And then we want to bring our diplomat over to Aaron. Opening trustworthy. Give up the settlements. Your question is clear. Many thanks. Your time was most valuable. Right, so we've now lost Dumfries, Sterling, and Aberdeen. And we can't attack the settlement straight away because we still need to wait a turn for walls to spawn. In terms of what you could do differently, you could give the settlements to another faction. You could give them to Ireland, Wales, or England, but I would recommend giving them to Norway just because. It's likely you're going to be fighting them pretty soon anyway, so if you give them to Wales, Ireland or England, you're probably going to be fighting two factions instead of one. So I'm just going to pass the turn. The fires of independence and there we have William Wallace, who has emerged on turn 11, which is the earliest we can get him in the campaign. So we can see that he is up in the Highlands there. And because we have stationed armies outside of Dumfries, Aberdeen, and Stirling, we can take back basically all these settlements in a couple of turns. We do have the siege equipment to take Stirling back on the same turn. It might take a couple of turns to take Dumfries and Aberdeen, and we can use William Wallace to start attacking Norway in the northern parts so that is one of the ways we can well that's the way to get William Wallace in the fewest amount of turns but it's also a bit restrictive in terms of gameplay because you can't conquer any new settlements until after turn 11 or it doesn't make sense because you'll just be giving them up uh, the next option I'm going to show which is using the, the second trigger is a bit more viable in terms of you're not restricted in terms of the number of settlements you can take but you do get William Wallace a bit later. The second way we're going to make William Wallace spawn early is by using the second trigger, which is the England Attacks Scotland trigger. So if you're playing in Scotland, I would assume that you're fighting Norway in the early game, just because they start right next to you. They have reinforcements spawn on turn 2 and turn 11, and you don't want to be fighting Norway in the north and England in the south. So it makes sense to go after Norway first because they are the easier target and that way you can secure your northern border and focus all your efforts on England. So 
In this campaign specifically, I haven't been fighting Norway, but that's just because I'm doing it for the purposes of this video. But by turn 15 or 16, you might be thinking about attacking England. So what I've done is I've taken a fairly large army down into English territory, and what we're going to do is take an English settlement, abandon it, and then let England take it back, which will trigger the Wallace spawn. And that way you can get them a lot earlier than you otherwise would do if you had to wait on the third trigger. So if you're going to do this, what I would recommend is taking siege equipment in your army so that you can just capture the settlement on the turn you attack and you don't need to wait a turn of sieging, which will give England a chance to attack you. And I would also recommend doing it on turn 16 or later because if you do it before turn 16, you'll need to wait in the settlement until turn 16, which is the first point at which if England take it back, then walls will spawn. So try to do it on turn 16 and try and have siege equipment in your army. So it's now turn 16, I'm going to take this I army, attack Chester. By your will, sire, we, shall engage. we can't assault because we've got we the siege equipment the siege, and we'll just resolve that battle there. So what you want to do here is you want to exterminate the population because when you abandon the settlement, public order is going to get really bad. So by exterminating, you increase it to its kind of what's, what's the highest you can get it to. So we've now taken Chester and we're going to straight away take the army out. Move up to Lancaster. It's actually worth disbanding the siege equipment just so you can move a little further yeah. and now Chester is down to 65% public order I prefer this to be 70 or above so it won't riot but if England take the settlement next turn then it won't matter anyway so we're going to pass the turn okay so England have taken the bait and gone for that settlement And because England captured a settlement off us, it has triggered the William Wallace spawn on turn 17. So if you were relying on the third trigger, which is just the number of turns to pass, it would be between turns 18 and 30. But using this trigger, we can get him to spawn on turn 17. Each one with freedom in his heart and a sword in his hand. If we go up to the Highlands there, we can see that William Wallace has spawned. So that's pretty much it for this video. There are three triggers that cause William Wallace to spawn. And the earliest you can get him is turn 11, and the latest you'll get him is turn 30. Hopefully this video was informative and it kind of gives some tips and guidance on how to recruit him in the fewest turns possible. I think it would be quite a fun campaign to do where you get him on turn 11 and see what you can do with him. Just as an added bonus, this is a campaign that I was doing with Scotland on very hard, very hard, just to give you an idea of where you might be when William Wallace spawns in. So I defeated Norway on turn 15 when I killed their king at Inverness because they'd run out of faction generals and their leader. They basically are destroyed. I'm just trying to take some of the rebel settlements along the coast and on the islands before I go after England so he has spawned in at quite an opportune time but again thanks for watching and if you can please like the video and subscribe it just really helps the channel grow and I'll see you on the next one